Hi boys and girls, it's Mr. Wasserman, and uh, once again we are looking at fractions. We're in our math journal on page 73 for unit 3, lesson 3, fractions on number lines. Let's take a look at the first number line, the first problem that says fill in the missing fractions on the number lines. Well as I can see, uh, down here on the left there's a zero, and on the right hand side there's a one. So we are looking at the span between zero and one. And the first fraction listed is one-fourth. Now that's going to be important because that gives us a clue as to what the other fraction should be. Now as you can see this number line is broken up into four parts and it is uh, divvied up with three hash marks between the zero and the one. That's to help us see the, uh, the different segments. So here's a segment here. I'm going to alternately color code or highlight the segment so you can kind of differentiate like so. So as you can see there are four segments between the zero and the one. Now it can be a little confusing because you see three uh, blanks for fractions, okay? So sometimes when we see three blanks, we might think, oh, it's three parts, but it's actually we're identifying four parts. So the first fraction is one-fourth, okay? And since there are four parts, the bottom number or the denominator is not going to change. We're all talking about fourths here. What's going to be different is the top number. So what comes after one-fourth? Well, that would be two-fourths. And after two-fourths, we would have three-fourths. And what comes after three-fourths? Well, here it says one whole. But one whole is equivalent to four-fourths. If I had four quarters, that would be the same as one dollar. So as you can see, this number line is divided into four sections for fourths between zero and one. Okay. Now if you look at the second number line right below it you'll see that it's been divvied up into three segments. Here's the first one, here's the third one, and in between it is the second one. Again using the the alternating colors to help you visualize how many parts this number line has been divided into, you can see that there are three segments. And when we divide something into three segments, well, you guessed it, we're dealing with thirds. So the first segment from zero to this hash mark right here would be one-third. And the distance between the zero to the second hash mark would be two-thirds. And again, three-thirds is equivalent to one whole. Okay? So that's how we get those fractions there. Now, take a look at number five. Okay? We have a couple of fractions here, one of which is improper. Oh my, what did it do? Well, the only thing in an improper fraction is guilty of is having a numerator that is bigger than the denominator. See, that is three halves. Three halves is bigger than one whole, okay? Because when you have two halves, like I have in this uh, circle uh, pie chart, when I have two halves, like this one, one, two, two halves is equal to one whole. So what does it mean when I have three halves? Well, three halves means that I have more than one whole, okay? So I would still have my one circle, like so, and I have my two halves. Here's one. Here's the second one. But then I would get a third half involved, which would look something like this drawing over the next number line here for my example. So I have three halves, okay, otherwise known as one and one half. Okay, so when I look at 
the number line distance, you're going to notice that it doesn't end in 1 like the other ones did. It ends in a 3. So that means this spans beyond just 1. Okay? So here's my 3. So that means if I were to think about these segments, okay, every other segment is going to be represented with one whole. Two halves is the same as saying one whole. That's what two halves are. If I had two halves of a donut, that would give me one full donut. Okay. So what then is the span between no halves and two halves? Well, that would be one half. Okay. So I have one half, two halves, three halves. So what will come after three halves? Well, that would be four halves, or four over two, which is equivalent to two holes. And what comes after four halves? Well, you probably guessed it, five halves. Okay, and three holes is equivalent of six halves. And again, if you need a visual, three holes, each divided in half, would give you six halves. And there you are. Six halves is equivalent to three holes. Okay? And that's how we would use a number line to help us understand fractions. Okay? And again, fractions are just dividing a whole into different parts. So when you are thinking about the fractions and labeling these number lines, you need to think about how many parts are there. Don't look at the blanks where you have to fill in the fractions. Look at the segmented parts of the number line. Okay, when you start to chart the number of segments, that's going to help you see how many total parts there are. Okay? If you have questions, feel free to reach out to your math teacher. Otherwise, we will talk again soon, friends. Thank you.